Hello, Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can hide cells within a repeating group without using a new search. So let me pick um, one of these users here, and I've got the different cell counts. So in cell number two, I have this user, and I've hidden them from the repeating group. Now I've got a drop down over here that will have the hidden users. So if I just select them, and unhide them, they show back up into the repeating group. So let me just go down here, I'll pick another one. So cell five, this, this Bob at test.com, I'm gonna hide them. So it goes from cell four to cell six, and it's shown up on the hidden users. I'll unhide them. The other thing I can do, so that was using a button within the cell. I can also have a drop down here, so I can pick that user here and hide them and they are no longer showing up in the repeating group. And then I can add them back in. So let's get into the design of this, but first, uh, please give me a thumbs up if you like this video or these types of videos in general. That way I know that you are getting value out of them. Also subscribe to my channel so you get notified of upcoming videos. Now the design here is using a repeating group and it's a pretty standard uh, repeating group. It's a uh, type of content users and I just do a, a search for users. I do have a, uh, a sorting in here so I sort by a last name in descending order and then first name in, in descending order as well. Uh, so to select that it's basically uh, add a field to sort and it's probably not going to give me, it won't give me last name because I've already chosen it earlier. So you just choose whatever field and then for descending order, no. And that's how you set that up. So that's all there is to setting up the, the repeating group. Within the repeating group, and this is kind of some of the, the magic here, if you will, is I have this group, okay? And the group is... Um, should have it this the full size of the cell and this is going to be used to um, hide um, or show each one of these cells so this is kind of the trick behind it all the magic behind it all is this group but before I get to details on that within the group I just have this simple text field and it shows the name of the person as well as their email so simply a, a text field over here. And just put that in there. And then I've got current parent group's user and then their first name. And these are all set up into my database. So that's basically how I go and set this up for the, for the user, for the text field here. And then I've got the current cells um, index. So for doing this, I'm just going to do the dynamic um, cell here. So insert dynamic data. And then I pick current cells index. So that's how you get the current cells index. And then for hide cell, so for this one, I'm going to actually jump over to two custom states that I have. If you're not familiar with custom states, I'll add a link to the videos I have on custom states. But for this, I have these two custom states. One's a hidden users. It's of type users. And then visible users, which is also of type user. And each one of these is a list. So if, to create a custom state real quick, I'll do one called test. And that'll be of type user. And then it's going to be a list of users because I'm using this uh, uh, custom state to add a list of users to it. So that's how I set up the custom state. And now I'm going to go back to the workflow here. And all I'm doing is I'm setting a state. So the repeating group hidden user state. And then the value is going to be that custom state plus the parent group's user, so that cell's user. I'm going to add them to the list for that custom state. And then the visible users 
I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to take the visible user's custom state and then minus item and then that user from that cell. So that's basically the difference between the two. I've got a hidden user and a visible user's. And then for hidden users, I'm adding this user from the cell because I'm going to be hiding that person. And then for the visible users, I'm going to be removing them because they're no longer visible within the repeating group. Now let me just quickly set one of these up for you. So let's do visible users. And on here, I'm just going to type in repeating because I've got this repeating group. That's the name of the page here, repeating group. So that's where my custom state is. And then I'm going to pick visible users. And then I'm going to click more. You'll see this more. So I'm just going to jump out here for a moment. So click on users again, and then you see more. So click on more. And then it's going to be minus, which I believe is down at the bottom. Yep, there it is, minus item. And then the item is going to be parent groups user. And then if I was doing the other custom state, be hidden, and then jumping down to the bottom, plus item. So that's how you set up this uh, the set state here. And if you're not familiar with where the set state step is, it's under element actions, and then set state. And again, repeating groups. And then I pick which one I want and follow through that process I just walked you through. Okay, so that is, that's all there is to this button here. And again, this button is going to hide the user from the repeating group. Now, let's walk over here to the visible users. I have this dropdown. And in this dropdown is dynamic choices. Again, user is the type. And then the choice, the the choices of source or the source choice is going to be that custom state. So the repeating group, visible user, sorted by last name. And then option caption is going to be the current options first name and then the current options last name. So let's kind of walk through this. So drop down over here. And for this, it's going to be dynamic. And then I'm going to be using that custom state. So I'm just going to start typing in. Let's see here. It's repeating. Oh, my bad. User first and then repeating group. There's the custom state. And for this one, it's going to be visible users. And then the current, and then on this one, I set it up so that it was going to be sorted by. So we click on the more. And then again, I think this is down by the bottom. And where is sorted by? Let's see, sorted. There we go. Sorted. And then by last name. I believe that's how I had this one set up, so by last name. Okay, so that's how we set up the choices. And then for the current option caption, Bubble will automatically give you current option, and then more, and then we're going to do first name. And on this one, so first name, and then you see it's got current options last name, so to do that, I just come back over here, hit the space bar for space, and then I click the current option again, and then I go and I select their last name. So that's how you set up the, the drop down here. And then in addition, I have a conditional on this drop down. So when this drop down is visible, and this this is kind of a way to preload the, the drop down. Um, because when the page loads, I want to make sure that all the users are added. So all I did here was I said if this when this drop down is visible, so it'll be visible on page load, I want to um, add all of the different users into this drop down. So repeating group, visible user, and then sorted by last name. Basically the same thing that we have right here. 
And I'm going to jump over here to workflow for a moment. Again, because this is a custom, I'm using a custom state, when you do a page refresh, the, the custom state's going to be empty, so I have to fill it with data. And so what I've done here is on page loaded, I have a, the repeating group, uh, visible users, custom state, and then I just have a search for user. Um, again, test users in this database that I have here, so I filtered out all of the uh, users that don't have a first name or last name. That's just to clean up the, the drop down so it looks neat. Um, but that's all you basically do. So just come over here, element action, set state. And then for this one, repeating group, visible users. And then I just do the search for user. And then I added the constraint in there. So that's basically all there is to initialize the, uh, the custom state. And then for page loaded, just come over here under the event, under general, and page is loaded. Now with that, this will go and load this dropdown, this conditional here when the dropdown is visible. This will preload the dropdown so that when we come over here, we have all of these users already into the dropdown. And then for this one to hide the user, it's kind of a similar workflow to the, the push button. So repeating group, hidden users, plus the item in the dropdown. So now we're adding that person that we selected in the dropdown. We're adding them to the repeating group, hidden users, custom state. And we're adding that value of that user. And then similarly for visible users, we are going to be removing that person from that custom state from the based on the value of the drop down. So let's kind of quickly go through this one also. And we have visible users. We'll use that one as an example. We have repeating group. And then this is going to be the visible users. And then I'll just type in, start typing in minus, minus item. You don't want to pick list, you want to pick item because it's just a single item. And then we're going to be using the drop down visible cells value. Okay, so in this step here, we're basically again updating these two uh, custom states the list of users that are visible in the repeating group and list of users that are not visible in the repeating group. So that's how we set up this hide user. Now coming over here to the drop down for the uh, hidden users, it's very similar to uh, this drop down here. Just kind of go on comparing and contrasting between the two. You can see that they're very similar. So repeating group hidden users sorted by last name. And, and similarly for the option caption, we've got the current options first name and then current options last name. The conditional, again, when it's visible, we show the hidden users, which when we, when we do a page load, it'll be empty. And then for the workflow, for this button to unhide the user, it's very similar. And instead of um, uh, hiding the user, we will now be showing the user. So to do that, we use the um, custom state again, so visible users, and we're gonna be adding the user back into the custom state. We're gonna add the drop down hidden cells value. And then for the hidden users, we're going to be removing that person from that repeating, uh, that custom state. And that's basically all there is. It's fairly straightforward uh, to set this up with a, re with a repeating group. And the, the trick is really leveraging these custom states to add a list of users that you wanna have visible and you don't want visible. And I'm just gonna jump back over here to the group. So if you recall, we had a group in, each, in the cell here. And so basically, uh, when we have the um, hidden user contains the current cells user, 
then we want to hide this element in the element being the the group here so that'll make the group hidden and then the alternate of that is when the hidden users uh, doesn't have the current cells user so when that custom state doesn't have the current cell user in that list then make that cell visible and I just want to jump back over here because one other thing that you need to set up for doing this is collapse this element height when hidden. So basically what that's going to do is, and the reason why you want to have the group take up the uh, size of the cell is so that when the cell, when the, rather the, the group is hidden, then it'll collapse this, the cell. And that's where we get this effect here. Let me just do a refresh. We hide the cell, it makes it look like that cell has gone away. The, the, the repeating group cell is actually still there, it's just hidden, and this is the way to hide it. So I've got other videos which I'll add um, into the uh, notes before the comments be below, and I'll have a link here in the video. Um, so I've got other videos that show how to use uh, filtering and conditionals for doing different searches uh, for a repeating group. But this is a, another way in which you can just simply hide different cells uh, within the repeating group without doing a search. And then you can always just add them right back and unhide them. So that might be useful if you're looking at certain users, you know, they may be students, or if you had a list of vehicles or properties, and you just wanted to kind of quickly go through and um, hide some of them out so you can quickly scan a subset of the list. That might be a good use case for this. Again, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Leave any comments that you may have down below. And please subscribe for upcoming videos. Thanks.